Thanks for watching. Along with Bill Raftery, I'm Tim Brando. Important game for Virginia with respect to the NCAA selection committee. They may need this W here for that at-large berth, Bill. Well, a lot of emotion and dedication involved with the Virginia players, and yes, they've had some good quality wins. In fact, I saw Carolina lose to them up there at Virginia, but this one certainly would help and give them, of course, maybe the push over the fence that they so well deserve, I think, because they played great basketball. Coming off a loss at home to Wake Forest, and obviously it would be something that would help their cause and maybe ensure to them their rightful spot as a participant in the 64 team field if they come up with a victory over North Once Carolina. Again, and gentlemen, Here's John Edwards the with Charlotte the starting Coliseum lineups. In this second quarterfinal game of the 1990 Atlantic Coast Conference basketball tournament. In this second game, the Tar Heels of the University of North Carolina beat the Cavaliers of the University of Virginia. Here are our starting lineups. First of all, for Virginia, starting at one forward, a 6'6 junior from Indianapolis, Indiana, number 12, Kenny Turner. At the other forward, a 6'5 sophomore from Freeman, Virginia, number 20, Brian Stiff. At the center position, a 6'9 freshman from Bowie, Maryland, number 42, Ted Jeffries. At one guard, a 6'4 sophomore from Faison, North Carolina, number 10, Anthony Oliver. And the other guard, a 6'1 junior from Spring Lake, New Jersey, number 22, John Cronin. The head coach of the Cavaliers is Terry Holland. Now for the Tar Heels of the University of North Carolina. Starting at one forward, a 6'9 junior from Utah, Alabama, number 32, Pete Choka. And the other forward, a 6'6 senior from Stanton, Virginia, number 22, Kevin Madden. At the center position, a 6'11 senior from Hacienda Heights, California, number 42, Scott Williams. At one guard, a 6'7 freshman from West Germany, number 5, Henrik Rohol. The other guard, a 6'1 freshman from Petersburg, Virginia, number 4, Kenny Harris. And head coach of the Tar Heels is Dean Smith. Dean Smith in his 29th year with a rotating starting lineup. Kenny Rice missed a, a practice, and it's always been his policy not to start a player after he missed that practice. And now you see the Atlantic Coast Conference bracket breakdown with Clemson winning the winner of this game to take on the Tigers in the semifinal round tomorrow, provided they get that victory. And Clemson obviously had to work hard to win over Wake Forest after getting that 26-point lead early on. And Timmy B, uh, Clemson's going to have to play a little better to beat either one of these clubs. Uh, these are two good basketball teams, but emotionally, Clemson did not get involved at all until late in the game, and then they showed what ability they have. They stepped up the defense. Billy, something that we talked about prior to the start of today's game between ourselves, and we should mention it now. North Carolina, a team that does not have as many offensive answers on paper. As you look at our officials, Jerry Donahue, Duke Etzel, and Larry Rose. But in recent games, they have warmed up offensively. Fox and company particularly in the Duke game at Cameron Indoor, a game that most ACC insiders were surprised by. Everybody outside was surprised too, but they still shoot around 50%. They take good shots. They don't make mistakes that hurt themselves. And Scott Williams, a guy that they look for. He keeps moving and they get him in position, they give it to him. You see the tournament series, the last one, a semi-final game that went into two overtimes. Dick Vitale and I had two two-overtime games that day in 87, Wake Forest and NC State. And of course, North Carolina State upset Carolina in the finals that year. Balvano came in the sixth seed and made it into the NCAAs by virtue of the win. And the opening tap control to Chilcutt and Enric Rodel. Rodel will shake, shoot. And it's taken down by Williams. We don't mean to soft sell Harris starting, but again, it's been a philosophy of Smith's for years to start who has been at practice. Almost for King Rice early. Smith not filling the lane. Crotty making sure it's not a turnover and resetting. Crotty. Oliver. Carolina gets the first hoop and it's 2-0. 
nothing. One thing about Virginia, they run a nice control break and then reset beautifully. Choke cut lost it. Little zip on that one and the new do sported by Terry Holland after that victory earlier in the year. It looks a little bit better. I saw him a day or two after. And he looked like he had fallen asleep on the lawn. <laughs> man to man. No trap out of this, no switch out of this as Rotor just does. He gets a hand in the passing lane. Oh, no, no, no. No. Rotor deflected the basketball. Heinrich Rodel in the passing lane here just gets a hand on it. And that should be yeah, you Virginia could tell. ball. Mm -hmm. You could tell Oliver and Crotty were not even concerned. No. The motion screens up and down. The pop-out guy right here like the show cut to reverse the ball. Takes a lot of stamina to defend against this offense. Two and a half offensive rebounds. One he fumbled after he got it. They're gonna have to do a better job on Scott. We should mention in that double overtime victory, it was Scott Williams that hit a jump hook as a freshman to send the game into overtime. So he has some tournament history against Virginia. Williams collects the rebound. Scott took steps. And they just don't let you make that move. I mean, the, it's almost at the point, there's no sense practicing it. Crossover, you put the ball down, it's still called the walk. You see now, end of the game, that quickly, with only two minutes gone, King Rice and Rick Fox. The usual starters at their collective spots as Rodel and Harris sit down. Uh, Rice contains John Friday real well, so John's gonna have to be composed and just take what he gives. Here on the switch is Fox. Up and down, pick for one another. Stith working on Fox. Stith with more power down low. What a prospect he is, in or out. 4-2 Cavaliers. Straight up man. The key defensively is to run through the ball as they get a reset on the kick. When the ball is on one side of the floor, Tim, on the reverse, you've got to split the basket, get into the three-second area, and make sure you're ahead of the cutter. Karate kicked it, so North Carolina will trigger it in. Terry Holland looking on. The buzz look. Moving on to Davidson. Be the athletic director there. James going to miss him, Tim. He's done a great job. Very unsung. George Lynch. They got Madden involved down there. Over the back, picks up the foul over Stith. Dean Smith has been around for many years. You see Phil Ford, Bill Guthridge by his side. Guthridge, the longtime assistant. They've seen many a game against Terry Holland. You mentioned Virginia missing him. That is a coveted job in the college basketball world right now. Well, everybody's got a favorite for it. Fox with the fake. Oliver. Turner follows. Good non call out here. Turner with his first deuce. 6-2, Cavaliers. Rice on Crotty. Well, Jeffrey's doing a good job on Williams. Lynch pops out. Stiff again up high for the rebound. Good control and of course pretty good balance by Carolina. Roddy can launch. Good screen out. Williams with a rebound. The outlet to King Rice. A good balance. Both gloves not giving up the easy ones. Williams. Secondary break, Tim. You got to step up. Everybody was matched up. Lazy on Jeffrey's part. Tar Heels cut it to six to four. And a charge on Anthony Oliver. Ooh. First time they used the trap. Pull the string to step through, ineffective. Tough call against Virginia, too. They close it off. See the feet together? Don't enable a man. I think they should have just let him play on. 
Just over four minutes gone. Virginia with the two point lead. They're awaiting Clemson should they come away with the win here. Changing here, we're just underway and a quick foul off the inbounds pass. And Anthony Oliver was the recipient that time. 12 zip. Yeah, second foul on Oliver and that is a surprise in as much as that start, but Providence just the kind of team to give John Thompson fits in the Big East. They may get John a little upset early, at least his team. You're about pressing a little bit. Good play by Sith. It's the, oh, they give the foul to Fox. While they've been all year talking about that, when you push down and post up, don't take the advantage away from the defender. That's what makes Stith so tough. Plays guard, can move up front, be physical. John Thompson, of course, so close to Dean Smith, but matchups mean so much in tournament play, and Providence lost by only two in Landover and then one at home. Remember that. Oh, they take the quick shots. They don't let the defense bother them. Not afraid to tee it up. Here at 6-4, the Cavaliers by two. Dean's done a great job with this team. This is not a great, great Carolina team, but the system has given him a good year. Stith for three. Chill cut. Outlets to Rice. Davis, Hubert Davis in the game on the run. Look at the ball moving and help here. Oh, nice work <laughs> defensively for Virginia. Oh, sorry, Kirby. I saw him put a tip back at the buzzer for the half. He is some talented, well, obviously in football. Yeah, not a bad running back. No, no, no. I think he could fill the bill a little bit. Fill a few holes. Turner. That's what he does best. Drags the defense out to really stick the open jumper. Kenny Turner has four. Half of the Cavaliers allotment so far. Chilka. Turner timing that one nicely. Roddy with such good peripheral vision. That time he got caught in the air. King Rice bothered him defensively. And these are two players that came up at the same time. And really, Dean Smith had a question to, to answer. Do you take Crotty or do you take King Rice? He went with Rice, and Rice has been under some heat during his career at North Carolina, yet he seemingly always plays Crotty well. Mm -hmm, he does. For some reason, he contains. He doesn't gamble. But Dean's been very happy. Every time we talk about King Rice, he says he's doing exactly what we want. And of course, John Crotty's had a great career, too. Williams could have kicked it out. With Cavaliers all around him. And Rice outside should have kicked it. Blunden, the designated defender. Oh. And now Rice with a two on one against Crotty. Box. Nice dish. Had the two on one as you noted. Blunden couldn't get back in time. But Stiff almost with an offensive rebound. Jeffrey swatted it away. You've got to reverse the ball and seal your man down low, just as Stith is doing here to beat this defense. Stith, good call here. Yep, a charge. Yep, they got the shoulder in. Once you turn and seal the man and step to the ball, just as Stith does, they reverse it. The timing's real good. The weak side help. Now, the extra pass, and you see Rice right down. That's something Carolina does well. So you think that's the logical pass to the other side of the box. They take it away. Stith with his first. It is an 8-6 lead for Virginia. The 1990 ACC tournament underway. Quarterfinal round, Tim Rando, Bill Rafferty, happy to join us. Rice is shot top there. Mabby finds Fox. Line driver for three. It was unusual to see King Rice tee it up. We we're fortunate to get the back tap and deliver it to Fox. 9-8, the Tar Heels with the lead for the first time. And a little zone, first time. London keeping it alive. The backup quarterback stays with it. Rejected again. Steph buries it. Nice work by Chilcutt defensively, it, knocking it away. It sure was, but they did hang tough. London plays more like a linebacker, though, not a quarterback. Fox. A lot of quick shots for Carolina. A lot of one pass, one dribble. Bang it. Seven points for Fox. There's a 2-3 zone again. 
They'll stack it up now for Crotty. Fox retrieves it for North Carolina. Madden! Oh, the iron on time. What happened is Crotty on the shot. They didn't have the balance. They dodged one. Stiff, what a move past Williams, and he missed the chipping. Looking for the contact. But because he ran the floor, he was the beneficiary of that little tip. Good pace to the game early it is, on. It's, it's a little upbeat. First half, the first game, a little more subdued. Stiff, a little inside, outside action with Jeffries. Would have had some open shots and haven't delivered. Boy, can he follow? He just has a natural feel. And there's a little blow being asked right now as he turns to Terry Holland. The sophomore from Brunswick High School in Freeman, Virginia, has six of the Cavaliers' 12. They trail by one. Fox. It's run down by Crotty. Nobody back. I think they felt the defense didn't get back, and they bailed themselves out with a nice step in, but I think it was the right call. But then switching the defenses cost them. Weren't familiar with where to go. Turner with the ability to just get the shoulder turn and put it up on the glass, but just elapsed defensively, and they were burnt. started the contest for North Carolina. And Matt Winstrom, also in the game. Massive substitutions, but that's normal for Dean. Not so normal for that man. His Cavaliers down. There's a two-point lead for the Cavaliers. One of the reasons Texas A&M is shoring up its basketball program is because of the success of Texas. Tom Penders has made the Aggies aware of basketball. That he has done. There's some great kids in Dallas. Lynch just into the game, gets the roll. And we're tied at 15. Stu Vetter coached him at Flint Hill Academy. We had a chance to talk to him at halftime, or between games, I should say. And he's had some great players. That, that is Scott Aaron Payne at Villanova. But this Lynch individual will be a big timer. Guaranteed. I step in by Rodel, and then they get the little nickel dimer. But nevertheless, Turner with the foul. One of the reasons you, you have to like Lynch is because of the ability to get up. His vertical leap and the quickness down the floor and his awareness. He's got all of the ingredients, as you mentioned. You ever notice you always like a player for what you couldn't do? Mm -hmm. <laughs> he sort of fits that, that role for both of us. Slide, talk to one another, switch on occasion. North Carolina, a small club right now with Winstrom and Fox and Williams all on the pine. The speed of the cut is as important as setting your man up for the cut. That's something Carolina does pretty well. In fact, both clubs with nothing more than small forwards at best on the floor. Jill cut. Well, does that take the air out of your defense? You play real hard, do a magnificent job, and then they drill one on you. 17-15, Carolina by a deuce. There's the switch. Rodel got caught deep, and then the help by Lynch. Turner. And the foul against Chilcutt. Over the back of Matt Blunden. That was a size foul, really. He got caught over a, bit, a, a smaller guy, and his body banged him. But a great rotation here. First, Rodel got caught. Then the help from Lynch. Rodel back to cut off the baseline. And Chilcott, you'll see, 
just really with a, a smaller guy moving in on him, and it's a, a body foul. Joe Gutt wants to be a stockbroker on Wall Street. What is it about Wall Street? Matt Doherty spent some time as a stockbroker on Wall Street. Well, Matty made all his money, now he's back at Davidson coaching. That's <laughs> the way to coach, though, make a few dollars. Of course, in my days, I uh, spent more than I made, but that's not unusual. Friday, puts it in. His first deuce with 9-10 remaining in the opening half. We're tied at 17. Not too much with the dribble. It's action with the ball. Back screen. Well, that little alley-oop out of this sequence. Rice. at the bench. King answers Crotty quickly, doesn't he? Mm -hmm. Both with their first hoops of the game. Well, after a few years in the league, you really sort of know the other guys in his game. And the key thing then is for the opponent to make his adjustments, however subtle, to beat the man or set him up a little differently. A little bit of a mismatch here, huh? Williams and Crotty. John will take him. Gets help from Fox. Good pitch. Rice piercing through. Well, it was a great talk about so, but when King Rice plays within himself, he lends to this team as well as maybe a better player might. Playing play. without burden right now. Mm -hmm. 21 to 17 already. Six lead changes in this first half. Now, Smith has Fox if they reverse it. Now, besides the back screen, and then the automatic switch. Stiff. Out to Crotty. I have been right on the money with a couple. They didn't go down, but Stiff created with the bounce for John Crotty. We talked about his being recruited at Carolina. His dad, John, and Kevin played in North Carolina. So Carolina was in his blood. Well, his dad down here, a great fan of basketball. Obviously, his boy has turned him up a notch. His younger brother's pretty good, too. 21 to 20. Oliver with a pump fake, and he pumps. Fox looked tired defensively that trip. Because this had a different story. <laughs> it's amazing how you're resuscitated yeah. when you go on the other end. Get a little Gatorade when you're shooting it, don't you? Stiff puts it in. How about the hesitation there with the bounce? 24-24. A tie game in Charlotte here at the Coliseum. 6.51 remaining. In the first half, Tim Brando and Bill Raftery, game two of the ACC quarterfinals. In case you just joined us, Clemson winning earlier today by nine against the eighth seed, Wake Forest. Good job stopping on the baseline defensively. Now that was a tired shot. They ran a brush screen for Fox. Not a good delivery. Stiff for three. Fox outlets to Rice. Boy, he wants to motor. No break. Good recognition. Fox the trailer. Turner rebounds. How many times has Terry Holland seen the secondary break from Dean Smith? They do come down in droves, but both teams a little bit tired right now. I think the pullout here is sort of relaxed the club by Crotty. Should they overplay? You've got to back cut and then replace. Crotty. Give and then go. Well, there's a subtle change. Rice figuring he'll go get it back, and I can go guard him on the dribble. A wise little cut by John Crotty. Kenny Turner with the good look, and it's 26-24, Virginia. Well, King on the other end there hasn't made any mistakes. Seventh lead change in the game, and Blunden picks up the foul. All indications are this one as close as the last meeting in this tournament between these two back in 1987. And the reach, of course, once you get out of position, you're going to give it away, Tim. That's a stiff arm from the quarterback. Only in this sport, it'll bring on a foul. The Cavaliers lead by a deuce. And we're just underway. 35-34, the score in favor of North Carolina. Crotty launches, Jeffries with the rebound. Ryan Stith, who had 13 points in the first half. Eight rebounds, four of them on the offensive end. And Jeffries knocks it in. And the Cavaliers with the lead, the fifth lead change. Check that, eighth lead change in the game. There have been five times. Joe Cup answers for 
Western North Carolina. And we're just going to go back and forth You're going to have an all-ball game. I noticed that time, though, Virginia did not get in their stances and slide the screens. Chilcutt was waiting at the foul line for the basketball quite a while. The big thing, I think Carolina, before the half, turned the defense up such a high level that Virginia did not react well. They've got to come up with some pressure release offense. Karate will need more help when they yes. extend that defense. And they got to cut to him, present themselves. Turner for three. Speaking of presenting, he can shoot, can he? He's had some knee problems throughout his career. Five, I think. Yeah. And were it not for that, he could be an all-star performer. And we've got a foul against Jeffrey. He has been very quiet, Scott, hasn't he? Of course, the drag and then the, the chuck. Jeffrey's uh, the big body laying on him, but uh, they've got to get Williams involved a little bit. Thirty-nine, thirty-seven. The Cavaliers. King Rice looking down low. By Williams with a Jeffrey's body all over him. Still doing a great job on that. Fox loads up for the trail. Ruth Fox has six. It's forty to thirty-nine. North Carolina. Box six for eight. Two. Excuse me, six for nine. Darn good shooting. Oliver. Oliver drains the three. 42 to 40. Now the Cavaliers, most of their buckets in the first half coming inside. Now they're a good perimeter team. Mm -hmm. Look out Carolina if they warm up from outside. Very few easy baskets for either club. Good balance, well schooled. Of course, these two coaches have been banging heads for a lot of years. Lead changes mounting in this game as we showed you graphically. Substitution George Lynch will come in the next dead ball. Rice loses his dribble. Oliver strips it. Stiff past Matt and Williams. Yes. North Carolina had not gotten into the spread offense at all. The 3 2, and here the pinch by Oliver, and really no break here but made a break by excellent talent. You talked about Stith's ability to get into small places and deliver his feel for the game, extraordinary. And the reaction from Scott Williams as Virginia with Stith down low and outside. He's so quick and with that jumping ability, he's extra special. Largest lead of the game for either club. 47 to 40, the Cavaliers. Stith, the valedictorian of his high school senior class in Brunswick High School, back in Freeman, Virginia. I noticed you've not much of a rapport with him. It may have been that intellectual <laughs> level. That he's a little above both of us. Stith knocks it away on the defensive end. Not relaxed defensively. A lot of guys who can do the things he can do on the other end sort of take a little time off. But to play post defense like that is extraordinary. Lynch. George can jump. And he nearly had the three-point opportunity. He gets fouled underneath. Oliver or Turner, but when you get the ball on the foul line like that, with a guy that possesses Lynch's ability, you're dead. Not really good defensive set by Virginia. Turner got the foul, his second. Enjoyed the halftime with Chris Fowler. All of the updates. We saw the end of the Tennessee game against Ole Miss, the Rebels hanging on, and Oklahoma State, there's a team that if they should win in the semifinal round, could work its way out of the bubble and into the 60-14 field. They beat Kansas State today, and in the Big Eight, that is such a class league this year, they may get more bids than usual. Are you thinking of becoming a member of the committee for <laughs> Sunday night? they got enough trouble, but you know, Chris Fowler, Watch most of these kids in high school. Yeah, he so did. It's got to be rewarding for him to sit there and watch him at this level. Graduate of Colorado. Good stories on most of them, or some of them, I should say. By the way, it should be Missouri that's next up for Oklahoma State in that semifinal round. Ooh, what a gamble pass. Look at this. Oliver! He had a curler 
two, caught between dunking and releasing. 49-42, Oliver with 11. Now Carolina almost got a steal on the press. We'll see if they go back to it after a goal. Davis off the dribble. Daniel hauls it down. Jeff Daniel, the senior from Indianapolis. Good run by Virginia right here. Lynch all over Daniel. That's a mismatch, and he took advantage. Quickness to Carolina. Good job sealing. Rice. Fox inside. The bounce pass. Maybe one too many, but Lynch retrieves it. Excellent passing. Excellent. Chilcott in a tough position to shoot. Not a bad look. Bounce pass in there. The tough interior pass. They were on the ropes, though. Came up with two. Now they forced the turnover. Oliver losing it out of bounds. The largest lead of the game by Virginia, answered by a quick defensive run by the Tar Heels. The lead is five. An, enter an entertaining championship week indeed. North Carolina with possession. Tim Brando along with Bill Raftery, happy you joined us. The ACC quarterfinals underway. Out of bounds to Virginia, they claim. They got the wrong call. Yep. And only one official saw it. And they couldn't get the help from the others. Yeah, Duke Edsel yeah. did not get the help that he deserved. Turner obviously knocked it out of bounds. See if Carolina steps it up a little bit. Remember before the half, Tim. Oliver. 51-44. Oliver now with 13 and nine and a half minutes play. Turner, excellent inside with Madden, who's terrific at holding off. Oh, it's getting physical down there. Well, it's a play-on situation. It is banging and it is physical, but it's this level that warrants putting the pee in your pocket. Third foul against Oliver. The ACC tournament, the first round continues tonight. Maryland and Duke, followed by North Carolina State and Georgia Tech. Mike Patrick and Dick Vitale will bring you that one. And we'll have John Saunders in the studio taking over for Chris Fowler. He'll keep us busy on what's happening throughout the country as championship week continues on ESPN. Madden gets the roll. And seldom do they do it with the dribble. With three. 51 46. Here's the stepped up defense. I think you've got to reverse the ball, go over the top against this defense. Stiff and Fox have been carrying their teams offensively. Stiff missing that time. He has 16 in the game. Now it's Rich. Good kick out pass. Kirby almost ran under him. George Lynch with 10 off the bench. It's a 51 48. Top of the key. Of course, that foul line area, too. Brody. That was deep. That air ball. Madden brings it down. Rice to Williams. completely around. Scott has six. The Cavalier lead, which was once at seven, down to one. Two, three zone to rest, but you give it open shots. Kirby. Gambling a little bit, it's working. Kirby, maybe not your option no. early on in the second half. Maybe with another ball. <laughs> Brody got a hand on it. Uh -huh. Pretty play is Rodel. Yep. A foul away from the ball. Gary Donahue whistled him. Of course, when Kirby fouls you, you usually would feel it, I would, I would think, <laughs> huh? 
Because he made a nice play. He was trying to tip it to the fast breaking John Crowdy. It's good to see, though, in college sports that the coaches at a school cooperate. And you'd hope that the spirit of cooperation would continue with the change in coaching when Holland is gone. Mm -hmm. Because George Welsh and Terry Holland have gotten along so very well. London, of course, playing both sports. Kirby as well. In fact, London and Kirby had to leave for bowl practice before their bowl game appearance, and then they went to basketball, back to football, then to basketball again. Nice reaction. A Turner put it in. Adults as well, huh? Yep. 54-50, the Cavaliers. Chilcutt. Got to come up and play him. He has made threes. He's a decent shooter from that area in Virginia sleep. By the way, as a footnote to that story on Kirby, they would not have recruited him at Virginia for football had not they allowed him to play basketball. Nice job there by Turner with the release. Helping Crotty. There's Steph. He is all basketball. He has 18 in the game. 56-52. Well, they made Carolina pay for the trap and the gamble. More aggressive. up his fourth really a little overzealous here not necessary they got the trap doesn't have to reach down and try and create the turnover Oliver one of those players that really played well when called upon in that reserve role a year ago in the Oklahoma game that's the one that really comes to mind in the NCAA taking advantage of Smith here Came up empty, though. Not a bad gamble. Turner finds Stiff. Get out, Scott! London blocks out well. Over the top. Yep. But he got caught, didn't he? I, excuse me, I meant the ball over the top. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, he did give him a little hip action, <laughs> London did. A little shove. Yep. Well, a game of stamina right now, I think. It's stamina that sort of breaks down your concentration if you don't have it. Who's that spread again? The 3-2. A lot of sloughing off by Virginia. Oh, oh goodness. Chill cut and Blunden. And Blunden will pick up the foul. He's been involved in a few takedowns in his career, huh? Blunden gets his third. Well, you mentioned earlier how tough it is underneath. Now, this is what they teed up for. I mean, this is really a sack by Chilcott and a retaliation by Blunden. Yeah, it's physical with that oblong ball and with the round one. 56-52, Cavaliers. of that as we continue here in the second half from our championship week. Terry Kirby's going to play an important part in how he plays Fox. Alley oop to Williams. Nice one. 56-54. Scott Williams has eight. Jeffries just snuck a peek. Friday launching in a hurry again. And the Tar Heels will have a chance to tie. So their problems continue from outside. North Carolina, five of nine. So they're heating it up. Their threes seem to be wide open threes, though. That's the difference. Lynch grazing the iron. Crotty out to Kirby. Good control right here. is pretty good, isn't he? Finds those little holes. Dean wants the player control foul, but yeah, you mentioned earlier he is good. A little shake and a little, just doesn't get around and of course the body interlocking made it easy for the official. But they did have the open jumper, maybe lacking a little confidence on the strokes. Yeah, you're beginning to see some shots 
that would be foregone conclusions that Virginia would take, not take it. Turner with the loose ball and the hoop. Perseverance tried to make the kick. They're going to have to handle that trap. Kenny Turner has 15. There's a steal by Jeffries. Mason beating the guy to the spot, Tim. Truly a game of spurts. Virginia out to a seven-point lead. Carolina answers with pressure. They cut it to two, and now the foul against Fox on Jeffries, his second. As a guard, you're going to have to feel that trap, and before they get set, have the pressure release man at the foul line or the wing, and pick it off the dribble and bang him, and you can get something easy. Occasionally, it seems Virginia's almost baiting him into the trap and sort of tantalizing Carolina. Chilcutt comes back into the game. Williams sits down, as does Kevin Madden for North Carolina. And also into the game, Hubert Davis for the Tar Heels. One of the guards now out front in that 2-3 zone for the Tar Heels, number 40 in white. but not finishing. Rice. Turner collects it. Well, when they need a big rebound or a big hoop, Kenny Turner is right there. And they all check out beautifully. The game taking on the look of the 87 double overtime game. It really is. A game that went back and forth with many lead changes. Finally won by North Carolina by two. Game played at the cap center. Kirby for the wide open three. Stiff on the boards again. Just held off beautifully. Great position. Five offensive rebounds for Stiff. He has nine in the game, nine boards and 20 points. A double-double on the way for him, and Fox answers as he's been the catalyst for the Tar Heels offensively. He has 19. They put three, didn't they? Yep. 60 to 57. Fox changes the trajectory on his three pointer as much as anyone else. That may have been an Trajectory. A nice job by Crowdy. Just a little bit of a bounce to draw the defense. Then the ball reversal. Madden coming back into the game for North Carolina. And Jeff Daniel comes in for Virginia. Jeffries gets a blow, and Bryant Stiff answering Rick Fox, rainbow for rainbow, down deep. A little Purvis shortener game. Bryant, you are special. Doesn't seem to get very tired either, does he? No. Remember Buck Williams played at Maryland, and of course at the Nets in Portland. He just, all the minutes you need, and he never looks like he's expended any energy. remaining. Fourth seated Tar Heels and the fifth seated Cavaliers. Madden, yes, and it counts. He initiated that offense. Challenging physical play. You pay for a good position as well. Right here trying to seal the baseline and right in the jaw on the uplift. And a chance for three. He has used the dribble better than most of the Carolina guys, hasn't he? He really has. It seems as though Kevin Madden has been with North Carolina since the beginning of time. <laughs> and you can say that about a number of past players at North Carolina. You could say it about guys like Matt Doherty, Kenny Anybody Smith. Four years. Yeah. It seems like an eternity. <laughs> I don't know how your wife does it. <laughs> Madden did sit one year, not because he was ineligible academically, but because he wanted to shore up his academics. He's actually a fifth-year player. 63-60. Brody to Kirby! Whew. Is that the three-hole he went through? Exclusive. Scott had an easy.
easy attempt, didn't he, Williams? Roddy with his first hoop of the second half. He has nine in the game. The good control break set that jumper up. Stiff. A little rejection of a Madden interior pass. Rice way off the mark. Holland wants control in this sequence. Straight up man, Dean not waiting. Might see a little trap in an ideal situation out of it. Kirby feeds Stiff. Oh, 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 what a play. <laughs> and you see the body control bending backwards, hoping that the kids would go. Not much Joe Cut could do, nor can that man. With, a, with an athlete of the caliber of a Brian Stiff, both inside and outside. Well, the trap set it up, though. The read by Stith, the understanding, the capability to understand. Punish the Tar Heels. Rodel leaving the game. Played for the West German team in the World University Games. And moved over to Chapel Hill to Chapel Hill High School. And you see coming into the game from North Carolina, Jeff Dinney. Shooter. Yep. They need more outside shooting strength because King Rice has come up empty. Sophomore jinx for Brian Stiff in a season that was dotted with a number of players that played so very well. He was the ACC Rookie of the Year. In year two, he's led his Cavaliers to a nine-point lead over North Carolina. the floor. 
score. 21 for Fox. Terry Holland quickly to his bench. Time to bring Anthony Oliver back in in the next dead ball. Well, they've got to get the passing and, of course, the ability to defend and control. Probably take Kirby out. Serious 
And like most coaches, Dean Smith went right over the Fox and right there, a, the possibility of becoming a soprano on that particular rotation. And Dean just checked with him to make sure, he, and he said, I'm fine. And Dean then went to work with the officials. Mm -hmm. To get back to your statement. Well, he's very quiet about it. He has that stately manner along the sidelines, but in a very quiet way, he makes his point. Mm -hmm. And over the years, the counterparts. Well, don't you think you do that as you gray absolutely. in age oh, in a profession? There's no question. You get away with a lot more now than you did 10 years ago. <laughs> right, Billy? <laughs> Not at home. 75-70, Virginia. They'll need Fox to come in as soon as possible, but Davis drills the three and the timeout. The first of four for Smith to use. Yeah, a little sarcastic clap from Dean headed to those striped shirts. quarterfinals Virginia the fifth seed with a two-point lead over North Carolina 234 remaining both teams with three timeouts remaining the possession arrow right now with North Carolina should there be a tie ball they would come up with it that's important in the waning moments well in this situation John Crotty has to step forward but he needs assistance because of the type of defenses that Carolina runs when they initiate a trap on John Others have to present themselves for the pass and then the give back to John. You can run the baseline, and London does so and gets it into Oliver. After the made goal. Getting it inbounds is so important against North Carolina's defense. Now, Turner's been a great bailout on that top of the key or foul line entry pass. A lot of face guarding. By the way, we noted Dean Smith getting to the officials going to break Jerry Donna he went into the huddle just as we went away to the break to let him know he'd have none of it Rice a nice job here Henny Fox to Davis Davis hit one on the other side just moments ago he missed that time on the opposite end 150 remaining Lynch took it. It was actually, I think, Rice that got most of the grab and hold. But that's the situation that Carolina presents for you, and you must save the dribble. You must be in position to make the next pass. Here, John, because the ball's fumbled. Now he's concerned about making the next pass, but they just close it on you so fast you can't find people. Lynch got the foul. And it's heating up. The verbiage is being passed. You can tell the intensity on the sidelines with Dean Smith. Terry Holland working the officials when he can. Lynch leaving the game. And Crotty only two points in the second half. Nine in the game. But five outstanding dishes, and that's what he brings mm -hmm. to the dance. Sure does. A lot of poise as well. Kirby coming back into the game. Anthony Oliver sits down with the, the four fouls. They'll let Kirby play defense. Yeah, exactly. A little stronger. Of course, the ability to block a shot. 77-73. You see the time remaining. Williams wants it. And he takes it. Timeout. Tar Heels. Dean has two remaining with 131 left. This one progresses that Virginia is on an emotional ebb because of Terry Holland. They need this victory in their own minds to secure that at-large bid into the NCAAs. And, of course, there's no team they'd rather be to keep Holland alive than North Carolina. Do you think they really are saying, let's do this for Terry at this point, a minute 30, maybe before the game? You know, I, I just think the Carolina factor in a tournament game yep. and obviously the chance to move to the next round and the possibility of the NCAA plays foremost in their minds. But uh, it's extraordinary what Carolina can do to be disruptive. And that's what Terry's concern in that timeout is. Once we beat the timeline after we initiate the offense, 
who do we want to be the pressure release man and what is he going to do once he gets it it has been Turner at the top of the key the three-point shooting you see Virginia with problems all game long North Carolina at times lighting it up but they've also when they've missed they've missed ugly King Rice with a couple of air balls now Virginia to trigger it in London again the quarterback gets it out to stiff and the foul on Lynch they threw that up big and Lynch and Fox there but stiff up so big that's how much he valued the ball London getting it in at 6-7 he has the ability to look over the defenders and that definitely aided him that time and it will help his pro career huh in football as well but right there Fox toe to toe could not get up in time for one of the more talented performers in the college level he's been perfect at the line so far Bradstead. Larry Rose stops play they'll wipe up some perspiration now Billy Etheridge you mentioned been there a long time so well respected by Dean for his contributions to the program and of course Dean is noted is great at stealing these type of games similar circumstance with the game played at Virginia their most recent game took them down to the last two seconds Virginia had a big lead there and had to hang on to win by one nice kick Davis baseline again they did not get the timeout and Dean Smith is barking about that he wanted it they had the hands up 107 remaining Virginia by a deuce Carolina has to play the good D. They don't have to make mistakes or gamble. It's only a two-point game. Fox picks up the foul. That's four on Rick Fox. Not your typical North Carolina year, nor your typical North Carolina team, but in the last couple of minutes, that man is always typical. Uh, it, it, everybody knows in the game how his program ha has done such a good job to get him where he is this year. And, of course, Turry, with his kids, they, they've really had some terrific wins and excellent opportunities because of guys like Stith and Crotty. And I think the other guys have gotten better as the year has progressed. Your basic double-double for Brian Stith, 30 points, 10 rebounds, 6 of 6 at the strike. Now Virginia has to force Carolina to use some time. They can't give them the quick hitter. Chris Carolina with the ability to call timeout and get set again.
play by Fox, the dribble and the kick, Davis came up empty. 16 seconds left, a chance to tie, a chance for overtime. Now, a lot of coaches like the 2-3 zone on the out-of-bounds. Virginia plays man-to-man. -man. Let's see if they pay for it. Terry Holland wants a timeout. He gets it. It is absolutely amazing how much this game reminds us of the game played at the Capitol Center three years ago. There were, at times, some emotional moments. And was, remember, remember Sheehy, who played for Virginia, always got up for North Carolina, Tom Sheehy. He had a big game that day, was finally a foul-out victim. North Carolina took advantage, sent it to overtime twice, and eventually won the game. Now, that Virginia timeout, I'm looking forward to seeing what they come back with because they've been playing man-to-man -man on the inbounds. Do they go zone and force the ball outside and then try and match up into man-to-man? -man? It's a gamble right now. If they stay man-to-man, -man, there's a, the possibility of a little screen and a loop to the goal. Of course, the bigger guys may be a lob up in the three-second lane. And, of course, Dean Smith with an opportunity now to set up a play. He likes to run things that work against both man-to-man -man and zone. So you don't have that difficulty if the switching defense occurs once your players are out on the floor. Well, he has an extra option in the second half in the form of Hubert Davis. He's popped free at times and has had the wide open jump shot. I think if you're Virginia, you ask the question, do you possibly <laughs> consider fouling? I, I think you got to play good defense. I, I don't know. You get the ball back, no question. But I think you got to play straight up the chance of fouling and then giving him a, a field goal and a foul. At this point, the worst that happens is the overtime. Rice is clearing out much as they did for Kenny Smith at one time.
get the call from Dean Smith, and he has been more than adequate offensively in the second half. Fresh legs, too.
yet to shoot. He's also yet to score. So, I mean, he has been a factor. A backup quarterback to Sean Moore on the football team. They won the ACC championship. But he's not a backup today. He is a reinforcement. And Virginia has a five-point lead. Tim Brando along with Bill Raftery. Welcome back to the Charlotte Coliseum in Charlotte, North Carolina. A five-point game here, Virginia with the lead. And in other scores, Providence now to within four. Georgetown by 75-71 of the Big East Tournament, another special tournament at the Madison Square Garden. Missouri trailing Colorado, a great story there. Tom Miller, of course, out as the Buffaloes head coach. It is now an eight-point lead that they have over Missouri. Now, the speed of the score important to both clubs. Carolina, obviously, as quick as possible. The timeout there to set the D. They've got Denny in who can shoot the basketball. Rhoda and Rodel, who can shoot the ball as well. Of course, Virginia, time consumption is central. They've got to cause Carolina to bounce it and delay the clock as much as they can. Scott Williams sent it to overtime in regulation, but it will take at least two trips for Carolina now. Locked and locked it away. Great front job. Anybody got a double tick? You saw Turner down to help out. Good support. Carolina may be more dangerous here, though, Billy. Yeah, you're right with the lob or the at least pop-out jump shot. They got Williams again if he posted up. There he is with Blunden, and he picks up the foul. Are you sure Blunden's a quarterback? <laughs> he plays... Like one of those tight ends, linebacker types, very physical. Yeah, he's definitely a quarterback. Ask the Clemson Tigers. He had to start that oh, game. Oh, he threw that. Didn't he throw a long one, too? Threw a bomb, yeah. you're right. Yeah, you've covered enough football. <laughs> the quarterbacks aren't supposed to be this way, are they? Supposed to be gentle. Tip back, Lynch. And Davis is right on his spot. It won't fall, and Oliver's got it. And the foul against Rodel. And they sense the victory in Cavalier country. Toby's not ready to go, is he?
I especially enjoyed this trip. It was a thrill, wasn't it? The way these kids went after one another. Well, the tournament atmosphere just brings out the excitement and the win or else mentality. One and done. Yep. The preparation, too. You can see how well these players know one another and know the opposing coach. And of course, they're geared to stopping the clock. They're so well organized and understanding score and time situation. Just that little giveaway right away by Carolina tells you that they don't give it up easily. You're going to have to play until the, the whole thing is over. Well, we've gotten a true indication as to the balance of the league because the eighth seed was down 26, fought back, got it to within three late, losing to Clemson. The Tigers shot very well, played re relatively well at times, gave it up a few times. But this tournament is absolutely wide open. I think these two really went after one another, though. This was a very enjoyable performance from beginning to end, and Virginia with the inbounds now. I'm surprised, I'm surprised they don't go back. Get it in. They got a five-second. Yeah, they did. And North Carolina gets it back. Georgetown, by the way, has beaten Providence. We're told 78-77 in the Big East tournament after being down 12 nothing at the outset of the game. Big John comes away with the first W as he heads into the semifinal round of the Big East Tournament. A couple of big games coming up there tonight. Syracuse and Pittsburgh, a better matchup than most people might think. Are they going to shoot it? Williams, too strong. Rice. And the folks from Charlotte. 